Well, I'm trying to figure out how this uh, dictation uh, <laughs> digital voice recorder works, but uh, we'll go on here anyway. The um, idea of what were my grandparents like uh, comes to my mind. My grandfather, on my dad's side, was very quiet, uh, that I remember. And he may have had uh, some language problems, but they weren't apparent. When he had something to say, it uh, came out just fine. Um, he had told his uh, children when they were young that he didn't want any Danish spoken in the house, that we were in the uh, American area now, and we'd all speak English, which uh, in a way is admirable, but uh, I've often felt I missed out on the chance to learn any of another language, particularly that of my heritage. At any rate, uh, I remember him um, taking my baby sister on his knee and bouncing her up and down while he sang, Boys and girls will all go to Boston. Boys and girls will all go to Boston. But that's about all I remember. <laughs> and uh, there was another time uh, my mother reminded me of where the the girls, his daughters, were all in the kitchen talking away, probably in a gossipy way, about somebody. And after a bit uh, came this big, strong voice from the next room. My grandpa says, Leave her alone. Just let her be. <laughs> so... That was his attitude about the ladies gossiping. My uh, Grammy, grand, grandmother on my dad's side, was uh, a very sweet and, uh, when I knew her, very limited uh, physically. She did a lot of needlework. Um, she may have been a seamstress in her uh, early years. And I gather that maybe uh, Grampy had been a woolen merchant in Denmark, or at least training in that before they left. At any rate, I remember sitting around uh, with various forms of uh, needlework. And I remember that her legs were extremely swollen, so she must have had some form of dropsy or congestive uh, heart failure even in those years. This didn't stop her from going places. Uh, whenever, well, every Sunday it seemed like to me, we would go down to uh, Aunt Norris, where she lived, uh, and pick her up, and we'd go for a Sunday drive somewhere, sometimes all the way out to our cottage or camp in uh, Penamaquan Lake, which may have been, oh, 15 miles out there. And uh, my dad was very much uh, an honoring son. Uh, he would take great care of his mother. So we learned that as well. The uh, interesting thing I remember her saying one time, uh, I probably was uh, in my early teens, and... Uh, my dad always had a victory garden, and uh, he had great expectations for my abilities in weeding. He would talk about how he had to weed rows and rows of turnips and carrots when he was young. And he'd show me how to do it in our garden, and uh, he was sort of a wild man. He would grab these things and throw them, and boy, he'd move down that, lane, that row and uh, this was how he had to go. And my style was far more deliberate, and uh, he must have been frustrated. But anyway, he was always talking about uh, how hard he had to work. 
And he did look pretty muscular to me, so I thought he probably did. At any rate, uh, one time in my uh, early teens, I had uh, mentioned to Grammy that my dad always talked about how hard he worked on their farm. And she smiled and said, uh, he didn't hurt himself. <laughs> I thought, oh, I got one on my dad now. <clears throat> A bit about <clears throat> my name and how it came down the line. Uh, my father was named Carl with a C, C-A-R-L, Gregory Peterson. And uh, this was after his father, but slightly modified. The uh, fact that there were three of us in the next generation with the name of Carl was kind of interesting. <clears throat> because my dad was younger, he didn't have his uh, <laughs> Carl until uh, later. <clears throat> so uh, Carl had been used by my Aunt May for her son and by Uncle Bill for his son before I arrived. But they had a different middle name. So I was still able to be Carl Gregory Peterson, Jr. And I kind of liked that idea. And I guess the name idea was uh, Greg would be an easy differential from my father if I were being addressed. And so I never used the name Carl until uh, probably in the military where nobody uh, bothers with uh, any close uh, relationships except your immediate buddies. So every time you fill out a form, you have to put your first name down. And, uh, so I got used to responding to Carl in the military. But uh, as I got more uh, friends and closer relationships as the years went on, I uh, reverted back to Greg. Rarely uh, Gregory. When my son uh, arrived, I thought it would be really great to have another Carl Gregory Peterson, and uh, so we put that one on him for the the third, we called him, and that uh, we had to find another name as my dad, dad was still living, so we called him Pete for the first uh, four years of his life. Because we weren't living around uh, Uncle Pete, so this was easy enough. But as school started for him, we uh, switched back to uh, Greg, so there'd be no question about his name. So much for names. <clears throat> now over to uh, the grandparents on my mother's side. Now, for a difference, my mother was the oldest in her family, and therefore, I was the oldest and first grandson. So I have a lot more memories of uh, these uh, grandparents and uh, stories about their origins. Uh, here we call my grandfather, Grandpa. And he was... Uh, born in a family in North Florida. I gather that his uh, family were some stage of being farmers and ranchers because there were always talk about horses. And he had a bad scar on one leg just to the side of uh, the shin where he told me he'd had a bad horse that uh, tried to rub him off against a barbed wire. And uh, that was the source of that injury. But uh, he recovered and did fine. Um, he, uh, as a young man, got interested in um, the railroad and got a job as a switch engine 
uh, engineer in the early years, and uh, somewhere in there he uh, vacationed down in New Smyrna, Florida, which is on the coast, east coast, and that's where my grandmother happened to be uh, living at the time. And I'll tell you about her uh, later. But the interesting story is that she had a small horse or pony. And uh, I don't know if it threw her, but anyway, it, it got away. And uh, my grandfather discovered this uh, horse at large, and uh, he knew who it belonged to, which is kind of interesting. So he took uh, considerable pleasure in returning the horse uh, to my grandmother, and that was the beginning of their courting days. Uh, he advanced uh, along the railroad engineer business, and when... Uh, Flagler uh, decided to build a railroad, the Florida East Coast Railroad, all the way to Key West. They uh, moved from St. Augustine, where my mother had been born, to Miami, which was going to be the base of operations. And I guess they built that railroad two or three times, and each time it would be wiped out by a hurricane, and they gave up, and there is no railroad down there now. There's just the highway. At any rate, that brought him to uh, Miami, and uh, as he became more senior, he uh, was in the Brotherhood of Railroad Engineers and became uh, one of the first uh, engineers for the diesel engines, passenger trains. An interesting story there was that they had an eight-hour day, and that took them from Miami to Fort Pierce on the old trains. But when the uh, diesel came in, that only took about three hours. But it was locked in by the Union, and that was as far as the engineer and his assistant, the uh, so-called firemen, were allowed to go. The firemen had a job in the old coal-driven steam engines. And there was a uh, shoveling going on from the coal car right behind the engine into the uh, firebox of the uh, steam engine. And uh, it was quite a job, whereas when they went to diesel, there really wasn't anything at all for the uh, firemen to do. He uh, stayed on in his position because of the union and just sat there while the engineer uh, did the work. But I guess he probably was like a co-pilot, learning to do something if uh, emergencies came up. At any rate, uh, my grandfather would go back and forth between Miami and Fort Pierce and uh, I guess he had uh, an apartment or something up there in Fort Pierce. He uh, became a deputy sheriff in St. Louis, Lucy County. And uh, I think I have that uh, badge that he had. Uh, maybe in my things that uh, Zanel has. Not sure. At any rate, um, he said that they had to be armed because there were times when uh, they had difficulties. Uh, he wouldn't detail that particularly, but uh, it sounded to me like uh, the trains would be uh, sometimes stopped. Uh, this wasn't nearly a problem as it was in the western states, but uh, nonetheless, uh, he was in charge of that train, and he was expected to protect it. Whether the other officers, such as the conductor, uh, were also armed, I don't know. I do remember uh, his attention to the precision of his timepiece. He had a pocket watch that 
he would go in uh, about twice a week to the uh, watchmaker, and he took me with him sometimes. I must have been probably uh, five years old, and uh, they would check this watch of his for precision. Uh, this was done regularly. As we, uh, my sister and I, grew up, uh, we had a lot of time in Florida. One of the things we would like to do would be to go out ahead of his train with mom and dad and drive up, oh, to the next uh, crossing or two and put uh, pennies or dimes on the uh, rail. And then he would uh, come by in his train and We'd wave, and he'd wave out the window. Then after the train had gone by, we'd retrieve these flattened-out uh, coins, and that was great sport. The uh, other things I remember about him was uh, he would smoke a cigar and sit out on the porch. My mother tells a story of him being out there and Across the street was uh, another family, and they only had a couple of kids, and uh, Grandma and Grandpa had uh, several, which I'll go into later. And uh, this wise guy across the street yelled out, and he says, it looks like you've got a regular circus over there. And my grandfather piped right back, Come on over and the menagerie will be complete. My mom always <laughs> admired his quick wit. She would say she could think of these things, but not as quickly as she'd like to. He was a great storyteller. As I got older, uh, we would swap stories a great deal. And uh, I was sort of a joke collector in my uh, teens and college days. I remember... Uh, he would come on the train to uh, Callis, Maine, and uh, the last trip he made, uh, he had apparently a heart attack in New York uh, Grand Central Station, and uh, yet recovered enough to continue on up to Maine, where he was seen by our family doctor and put to bed in my room. I was in medical school at the time and home on some kind of a vacation. And uh, it's probably summer break. And at any rate, uh, after he felt a little better, uh, one night uh, Mom and Dad and I were in his room and he was feeling very good and started telling his stories and jokes, and uh, I would tell him one, he'd tell me one, and it was just back and forth for, oh, we had a, just a delightful evening for maybe a couple hours, and uh, then he wearied a bit, and we said goodnight and uh, left. Uh, the next morning I went in, and he'd already passed away. But I always thought that's a kind of nice way to go and having a great, enjoyable storytelling session and slipping away in your sleep. The, uh, Grandma was uh, born in Georgia. And there were a number of relatives up in Georgia, some still functioning on. Janet, my sister, keeps in touch more with family than I have. And she can tell you more about those details. At any rate, uh, I guess it was pretty hard times. It may have been related to the Civil War. But it took a long time for families to recover. And though they had land, uh, that was about it. At any rate, her family was big enough that they couldn't take care of all the kids. And she was sent down to New Smyrna somewhere in her uh, probably 12 years old to live with an older sister, I think it was. And uh, 
So that's how uh, she got down there and acquired her pony. Um, and I told you they married, and uh, my mother was born in St. Augustine. I think she was about four when they moved to Miami. The things I remember about my grandma was that uh, I, being number one of the grandchildren, received a great deal of uh, attention. I was super special in her eyes and uh, probably pretty badly spoiled. At any rate, I remember her scuffing in her slippers around the uh, wooden floored house at 151 Northeast 11th Terrace in Miami. And uh, I remember on Sunday the uh, newspaper would be thrown up on the porch and uh, she and I would make a mad dash to get to the paper and get the funnies. It was kind of a competition that she enjoyed. The other thing was that she liked to take me to the zoo and see the monkeys. And uh, her family always said that she liked the monkeys as much as I did. And uh, we had some really good times. As the years went along, I remember she was always the source of pancakes. Uh, it must have been more than once a week. Uh, and I'd get up early to get the first strike on the pancakes. And she had a syrup there that was called Alaga syrup, which was kind of a thick cane syrup. And to this day, I prefer a bit a thicker syrup than uh, the maple syrup from uh, Upper New England. At any rate, uh, she was a very loving person to me. And uh, I have a picture somewhere that shows her with my son, Greg, when he first arrived. He was only a few months, probably. Yeah, it was Christmas time. Uh, he was born in August. And she's holding him. And uh, we have several generations there. That was kind of fun. She uh, passed away after my uh, grandpa and uh, had moved from the place in uh, the northeast part of Miami to the southwest. Uh, I think this had something to do with the changing uh, occupants in that uh, different areas. I'm not sure of how that went, but I think uh, probably my Aunt Edith and Uncle Bob my mother's uh, siblings, uh, who were Florida, and uh, they took care of that move and her affairs uh, toward the end. My mother was the oldest, and then there was uh, Aunt Mabel. She had uh, two children. Sonny was uh, Boardman Homer Carraway Jr. That was the guy's name that uh, Mabel married. And uh, Anne, who was the firstborn. Uh, let's see. Then there was uh, Aunt Edith. And Aunt Carolyn, they were fairly close together because I remember they they loved to sing together and harmonize beautifully. There was a uh, another aunt in the middle that um, had a club foot and migraines and all kinds of problems, and uh, she lived at home and uh, died fairly young. I don't really know the details there either. Uncle Bob, the youngest, uh, was uh, the only boy, and uh, so he got special attention, too. He was about 10 years my senior, 
So uh, I saw a lot of him as they visited back and forth. My uh, parents uh, have an interesting story of how they met. The uh, Well, I'll go back to my dad. Dad was uh, born in Canada and uh, grew up there, I gather, on the uh, Burnt Hill property. And he was the first one to go to any kind of schooling after high school. And he went to a business school there in St. Stephen's for a couple of years. And uh, his younger sister, and the youngest of all, Aunt Milda, followed him there. So they both had uh, a bit more education and a little more potential because of it. And uh, Dad's story was that he got his first job in the Springfield area working for a postal delivery service of some kind where he was in the office. And uh, that winter he uh, made a little money and decided he wanted to... uh, learned to play the saxophone. So he bought one and uh, had lessons. And uh, this comes into play later because uh, he and his fellow worker were stamping lots of packages heading to Florida one cold day, and they said, why don't we just quit this job and go to Florida? So that's what they did. They packed their bags and his saxophone and uh, Got on the train, and uh, they got off in Jacksonville, so happy to be in Florida, and they said, oh, it was so cold. They said, not for us. Let's get back on the train, and they stayed on the train all the way to Miami, which was the end of the line. And uh, eventually, Dad got employment with the Florida Power and Light. It was uh, the electric company for... Miami, and they were just developing Miami Beach at that time. That would have been probably, oh, 1925 or so. And uh, he did pretty well there. He was asked to uh, head up the office over in uh, Miami Beach. And I remember asking him one time if he'd stayed there. Um, would he have been a big shot by now? And he said, no, there was a a level that you could rise to, and then it became a family business in those days. And if you weren't part of that family or close friends, uh, you never would advance very far. And this buddy of his uh, had stayed there and uh, did very well, but uh, I guess he re- didn't mind being stopped in his progression. Well, uh, somewhere in there, uh, during the time uh, he was hiring some secretaries for summer work, my mother, who had gone to William & Mary for a year, needed some income to help with the college expenses. And she uh, had had uh, typing and uh, shorthand in high school, so she applied for a job with Florida Power & Light. And to make it short, Dad happened to be the one who was interviewing her and hired her. And progressively, this uh, came to be a pretty good affair. And uh, they tell about it as though it were boom times in those days, and everybody was happy and driving back and forth between Miami and Miami Beach. And the cars would uh, not even bother to put the brakes on, they just bump into the back end of the one in front of them when the traffic stopped and everybody laughed and they were carrying on. And uh, Dad used his saxophone to get uh, some fun time and some fun money uh, in dance bands. And uh, Mom would go along with that too. So they had some good courting days. And when they got serious... My mother wasn't sure she wanted to leave Florida, and Dad had just had a call from his two brothers. 
back in Maine. This is interesting because they had worked in the mill in Woodland and had become blacksmiths. And in those days, in those times, I guess parts for the cars, early cars, were not uh, readily available. Maybe that was due to World War I. But at any rate, uh, they were able to fabricate the parts that were needed and became really uh, automobile mechanics in a primitive way. But then they progressed to uh, considerable knowledge in this area and opened up uh, a garage. And we're doing quite well. So they moved down to Callis and bought a little garage there and we're doing well, but they neither of them having any business training, uh, they said, we need Carl. So they called my dad and said, we need your abilities. And I guess the teaching had been pretty strong for uh, keeping the family together, especially the old idea of take three twigs together and you can't break them one at a time, you might. Uh, Milda had been uh, following my dad around and worked in uh, the Florida Fallen Light as well. So uh, he took her and sent her back there. And uh, he went back. And the marriage... Uh, my mom would say contract, <laughs> was that uh, if she married him and went to Maine, 